I had a very disrupted childhood because my mother was married 13 times and her boyfriends and husbands, they liked me better than they did her. I really didn't, wasn't comfortable being there. I ran away from home when I was 17 years old and I never looked back. I met this guy and I thought he was real nice. He told me that he, was, he wanted to come back to New York to start a life with me. I had, my, I had a son by then. We get to New York, he was still married. And three days after I got to New York, I was homeless. He just uh, up and went back to his wife and, and left me and my son. I went to a shelter, a uh, facility that was uh, supposed to be for homeless women with children. I let my son go to a, to a baseball game, and he went to the baseball game. The van that he was in got hit, and he was the only one that got killed. Three days after my son died, they told me that I had to leave that shelter because it was a family shelter and I was no, no longer considered a family. From that point on, I was homeless. I started smoking, I started, I started, um, trying to panhandle to get money. And I, I uh, did it for <laughs> many, many years. I moved to Central Park. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> There's a grate that goes up this, like that, and you climb up the grate, and right on top it's hot air. This is where I used to stay in Central Park. It's like my, my home for many years. I slept with my friend in two mail crates, a piece of plywood, 21 blankets, and a plastic tarp over the crate. And we slept through many winters there <laughs> for a long time. We had that spot and we had one more spot that was in like a tunnel. And we slept in the tunnel when the weather got really, really bad. We were there for like three, four years at least. I had went by this bar and the name of the bar is Mimi's. It's got a, a nice piano in the window and all that. I heard the music and all of a sudden I started dancing. So from that point on, I was at that place every day making money. I mean, I would dance outside and they would give me the money. At one time, I had 15 people lined up on the street doing Hava Nagila. Okay. It made me feel good. It's just like something that, that, that they like. And I made good money. I would say about 700, 800 a week. Whatever we had left after we got something to eat and, and whatever we need, really needed, then we'd go right and get the crack and smoke the crack. When I met someone in BRC, I was living on the street. He talked to me about would I like a place to stay. He said, what are you doing Monday morning? And I said, I said, why, what's the matter, you know, what's up? And he says, well, you want to move into your new place? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I told him that I just wanted to get off the street, do something better with my life, maybe do a little volunteer work. They believed in me. Those girls believed in me. They grew to understand what I was going through. When BRC found me a place is when I quit drugs. I'm glad to say that it's almost three years I've been away from, from, from smoking. They gave me back my self-respect and my self-esteem. But they also, in the same, gave me respect. And they convinced me that there was a different me inside.